After yet another W, the Sixers now have sole possession of the third seed in the East. Joel Embiid looked like a hero last night. Tyrese Maxey is back, and James Harden made some very interesting comments. All that and more coming up on Philly Take with RB. Perfect. What is going on, everyone? RB here. Welcome into the show. Like always, if you enjoy this content, leave a like, hit that subscribe button down below, and hit that bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming Sixers coverage. The Sixers get the W over the Clippers, 120 to 110. The Sixers move to 28 and 16 on the season and now have third seed in the East. They have surpassed the Nets, who lost last night, the Cavs, who have been losing and they're only a half game behind the Bucs, and they're inching up on the Boston Celtics. The Sixers have been playing much better ball of late. A lot happened last night. We were not able to cover the game live because it is at 10 p.m., and the Sixers now have started 3-0 on the West Coast, which is great. We'll be back doing the games live, YouTube, and playback, so do not worry about that. But there is a lot we need to break down from last night, and James Harden made some very interesting comments just a few moments ago, so we will get to that. But the vibes are high right now, man. The vibes are high. The Sixers have now won eight games out of their last 10, and they have broke that tie, and they're, they just keep moving up. you know. And at one time, this team was 12-12. and 12. They started off the year terrible, and a lot of people were worried, deservedly so. They were talking about changes and this and that. I think it's time to give credit to everybody as a unit. They've now gone on a couple big stretches, a couple big win streaks, and uh, they're finding it. They're finding the identity, the rhythm, and they're just playing great as a team. So it's good to see. Um, but speaking of high vibes, James Harden said something very, very intriguing just a few moments ago. And I want to talk about what he stated in an interview with Ramona Shelburne. But before we do that, shout out to the sponsor of today's show. Manscaped actually has some breaking news on their front, guys. Manscaped has finally entered the market of beard products. They are revolutionizing men's grooming with their brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. This cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 different cutting lengths all with one guard. Yes, that's right. 20 different lengths to cut your beard with just one guard. It is waterproof. It has a titanium coated T-blade that is tough on your hair, but smooth on your face, leading to better efficiency and an easier process. Their Pro Kit also comes with beard shampoo and conditioner designed to moisturize, reduce ingrown hairs, and promote beard health. Beard oil, which relieves the dryness on your beard and the skin beneath. And the beard balm, which better helps overall shaping your beard. Their Pro Kit also comes with three free gifts, a beard brush, a comb, and scissors. So go check out this brand new game-changing product by clicking the link down below in the description or pin in the comments. And use promo code PhillyTake upon checkout for 20% off and free shipping. All right, the Sixers man, James Harden, said this just not too long ago, and I want to know what you all think. He says that this Sixers team is the best chance he has ever had to win an NBA championship. Quote, it's the top for sure. We had some really good teams in OKC, that 18 team in Houston, but this team is definitely the best chance I've had to win. And this steals the show right here because... The vibes are high. People are believing. People are, you know, pushing their chips into the middle. This team is talented. Yes, they need some tweaks. They need some improvements, which we will continue to talk about near the trade deadline. But James Harden and Joel Embiid have found their duo, right? They have found it together. And if they continue to play the way they are and some of these role players step up and you get a healthy maxi, et cetera, Tobias that can shoot, this team could be really good. This is what Sixers fans like myself envisioned Months ago, when all of it would start to come together, uh, James Harden is the point guard that Joel Embiid has never had but always needed. And I tweeted this out yesterday. You know, last year, James Harden was such the focal point every day, the talking topic, right? He's a bad teammate. Uh, he doesn't try and he's terrible and this and that. How come he's having one of his best seasons? He's an all star this year and not one peep about him. That's partly why I do this show. Obviously, I love the team, but recognition deserves you know, to be given when when guys are earning that, right? And nobody's talking about James Harden and Joel Embiid. They are one of the best, if not the best duo in the NBA this year. So I'm loving what I'm seeing. And when they are on the floor together, it is just lethal. In fact, the Sixers have an offensive rating of 119.1 in games that Harden has played. That is 
Number one in the NBA by a comfortable margin. Shout out to Arge here on Twitter. He says supercharged point God. He has just been unreal, man. Just the way he's going through the motions and just uh, handling his role on this team, right? And finding, you know, when to take advantage, when to step up and be aggressive as a scorer versus facilitator. It's just been great to see. The Sixers have never had that before. And uh, let me know what you think. Is this his best chance? I think he has a, you know, a really good team around him this year. And I'm hoping to see this team go far in the playoffs. But something I want to talk about in terms of last night's game, because I watched the game, I went back and rewatched the end. The one thing that sticks out to me is kind of what I just hinted at. And it's the fact that the Sixers have never been able to run such an easy pick and roll. How crazy is it over the career of Joel Embiid? The Sixers have never had a point guard that can run a consistent pick and roll with Joel Embiid. This two-man game that I keep echoing, and you're probably tired of hearing it by now, this two-man game is exactly what this offense needed. It is the key. It's what Joel has never had. I cannot believe the Sixers have never had a point guard that could consistently run a PNR with Joel Embiid, but I'm watching it every play, just boom, boom, boom. James Harden, a little behind the back bouncer. It's too easy. It's too easy, and it's too effective in that. Uh, you know, rhythm of getting that down is just getting better and better. And as you get deep in the playoffs, that is the play you can rely on to get a late needed bucket in a game. I'm loving what I'm seeing. And uh, Harden and Embiid have been great together. But let's talk about Joel Embiid uh, because he was once again fantastic, superb. It's just unreal at this point. I want to start off with a couple plays uh, because Joel Embiid is doing things like this. 74-71, Sixers were up big. They gave up the lead a little bit. Look at that. Who? What other center is doing that, man? None, none. And I'm not about to go down a rabbit hole of Embiid, Jokic, and all these other guys. Every guy that is mentioned in those talks are good, right? Jokic is a good player. Embiid's a good player. I'm just saying there's no center with this skill set that is doing this type of thing on a consistent basis. He was just unreal yet again. He was unreal yet again. 41 points, nine rebounds, two blocks, 12 for 22. Now a top five all-time center when it comes to 40-point games. It's just unreal. Do not take this for granted. I say it every single show. This is not normal. Joel Embiid is not normal. He learned how to shoot by watching guys on YouTube at a late age. He has not been playing the game for as long as you think. And he is just this dominant and continues to add more to the arsenal. It's just, it's been unreal, man. And uh, Prez puts us here on Twitter. Last night, Joel B checked back in with 7.35 to go in the game. The Clippers had 98 points. The Sixers had a six-point lead. Again, the Clippers had come all the way back. But Joel put his foot down. He checked out with 2.53 to go. So just over four minutes later, Clippers still had the same amount of points. They did not score. Sixers had a 19-point lead. That ladies and gentlemen, is the impact of Joel Embiid. And for the people that want to say he doesn't play defense, well, here you go. Here's two plays last night that should be all over the highlight reel because, man, were they special. Two massive blocks. He throws a bad turnover. He says, all right, I'm going to get back down the floor. Boom. Get that out of here, Norman Powell. And how about this one later in the game? Clutch block here. Sixers were already extending the lead. That was part of that stretch. He said, no, you're not going up on me. So he is playing defense. Yes, you know, people want to see it more consistently, but don't forget Joel Embiid is one of the best defenders in the league. He is so special, man. It is unreal. And uh, Joel Embiid and James Harden have led this Sixers team to the fourth best defensive rating, ninth best offensive rating, fifth in net rating, third in the East. Harden first in assists per game, Embiid second in points. This is the duo we always wanted. This is the duo we always needed. This is what I talked about last year, the year before, right here. He needed a point guard, and the fact he's getting this resemblance of James Harden, who is finally healthy, is absolutely unreal, and I'm loving to see it. By the way, Joel hasn't scored below 30 this calendar year. He hasn't scored below 30 in 2023. That's all you need to know. He is doing this every night, and the fact that he is not involved more in the MVP convo right now is absurd. It is absurd, but I've let that go at this point. The last thing I want to talk about, though, from last night, because we can go up and down the box score, right? Kawhi was there, PG. People won't give the Sixers credit. They keep saying the Sixers aren't playing anyone. Yeah, the Clippers are not that good of a team right now, but you have Kawhi, you have PG. 
You have pretty good players like Norman Powell. And the Sixers pulled off late. Once again, the Sixers are learning how to win games. They're doing it as a squad, and it's a great thing to see. Embiid with 41. Um, James Harden only had six points, but he was effective as a facilitator in other ways. But the but the big thing is Tyrese Maxey. Oh, yeah, also one thing. I feel like Sixers fans have let George Niang go under the radar. How many years have we asked for a consistent bench score? Right now, George Niang's putting up 10 a game. I mean, he has been consistent. He's the perfect fit as a shooter next to guys like Maxi, Harden, and Bede. He's just playing his role, and I love it, man. Niang is having a great year. Just wanted to throw that out there. But Tyrese Maxey now, in his first two games off the bench, 12 shot attempts and 13 shot attempts. We talked about this in a video a couple days ago. 16 points, by the way, and last night, 22 off the bench. The first two games of the Maxi experiment coming off the bench have been really productive. And to be honest, I'm not ready to make a verdict yet, but I'm actually really liking it. And the reason is because he's still playing starter minutes. He came in the game yesterday in the final stretch. He's playing with the starters down, down the final couple minutes, but he's getting the shot attempts he needs. You know, it's like finding the best way to optimize, right? So that him and Harden aren't always on the floor together. Then Max, you can be that aggressor with the second unit. Also having Melton in the starting lineup, you know, gives them more defensive versatility. But Tyrese Maxey coming off the bench has been huge. He's finding his rhythm. Last night was really the revival game of Tyrese Maxey. Uh, what I mean by that is after the injury, you know, for the last week or two, he's been good, but he hasn't looked himself yet. Last night, Tyrese Maxey looked like himself. And, you know, the way he was just attacking the basket, blown by these guys, you kind of forget how freaking fast this dude is. I mean, He's just such a skilled scorer. His future is so bright, but right now the Sixers need him to be as you know optimal around Harden and Embiid as he can, right? Because you have that two-man game. You have that identity. Maxi has to find a way to fit in, and maybe the best way is to essentially go an entire game without having Harden or Maxi on the floor, right? Have at least one of them so that you can have some guy leading the charge who can score, who can facilitate, and is just you know an explosive type of scorer. But anyway... Let's look at this play from Maxi last night. I mean, this was, this is like, all right, I'm back. Look at that. The double step back. Oh, it is just beautiful, man. It is beautiful what Tyrese Maxi can do. I, I mean, what he continues to do is just absurd uh, as young as he is. And if he finds his rhythm and, and obviously the maturity is, is so huge, right? Because Tyrese Maxi now coming off the bench wouldn't have happened unless Tyrese Maxi requested it to Doc Rivers. Like he, he, he was kind of disappointed. He said, you know, I feel like I'm a starter in this league, but the way we are set up, I want to crank out as much production as possible. That's essentially what he said. And he said, you know, I'm going to be the guy that says, okay, I'll come off the bench. No problem. You know, I'm still playing 28 minutes. I'm still being productive. And now I can get more shots. It's not Harden and Embiid and Maxi, you know, for the first seven minutes of the game and Maxi can't even get a shot attempt. No, Maxi can come right in when James gets tired and he says, all right, I got you, James. Give me the rock. You stand over there. And James Harden has been better as a catch and shoot guy this year as well. And, um, you know, we're seeing more pick and rolls with him and Embiid, even him and uh, Mantras Harrell, who has been uh, pretty good. I know Trez didn't have that good of a game last night, but yeah, it's just good to see, man. And I think right now the Sixers are kind of aiming towards that, uh, that permanent role for Maxi off the bench, but playing starter minutes and, you know, kind of as a six man, but not really. And, uh, yeah, so far it's worked really good. And, and it, again, there's too many ball handlers in the starting five, you know, something's got to give, right? Even Tobias has had to become a catch and shoot guy. You don't want that though for Tyrese Max. You would much rather have him, you know, optimized with shooters around him coming off the bench, but you know, he also plays alongside Harden and Embiid and that can create a lethal threat at different points in the game based on the matchup. Uh, but coming down, you know, the final five, six minutes, I like what Doc's doing. And I have to f uh, finish this off by giving Doc credit. The lineups have been much better. He is evolving. He's coming around. He's at least experimenting with other things. You know, uh, if Tucker and Melton are not playing well, he leaves Niang in down the stretch of a game. So I've really liked what Doc has done the last couple games. I'm interested to see how long he keeps this maxi thing going because he did say he was going to try three different iterations of a starting lineup. I don't know how... Uh, productive that will be but right now this is working so keep it up keep it going Sixers could realistically go 5-0 and on this West Coast trip they are balling out right now and they keep climbing up the east don't pay attention to them though the media won't pay attention but Sixers fans know 
This team is turning the corner. We will break all of it down as we continue to go. Give me your thoughts down below in the comments section. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And like always, I will catch you all in the next one. Peace. <laughs>